Welcome to the worship service of the Cashmere Gardens Church of Christ, 4315 Lippenwell Street, Houston, Texas, ministered by Brother Winfred Frazier. It is our pleasure to have you with us on today. Together we will sing praises to God, lift up prayers, read from the Word of God, hear a gospel sermon, have an opportunity to give back to God, and observe the Lord's Supper. Let's now enter into worship. recited together our core value for this month entitled the new self worth god is good church he is not good some of the time but all of the time and all of the time god is good and all of the time god wants us to be good we thank god for life health and strength we realize that we're not here because we are so good we are only here because God is so good to us. And we must constantly be reminded of the fact that if we received what we actually deserve, we would have been gone away from here a long, long time ago. But God truly, truly, truly has been better to us than we have been to him. And he's better to us than we ever will be to ourselves. So wherever you are, whatever's going on in your life, whether you are at the top of your mountain, where, whether things are going well, they're going better than you expected, or you're in the depth of your valley, you're having a hard time right now. You ought to pause. Whatever the case is, just pause right now and thank God for things being as well as they are. We thank Brother Reed for opening us up this morning. We thank um, um, uh, the uh, uh, Brother uh, Lane for leading us in the reading of the word, Brother Jordan for leading us in songs of praise to God. We uh, thank Brother Stewart for uh, lifting up prayer to God on our behalf. We thank God for everybody's presence on this morning and uh, should there be someone who's visiting with us, thank you for uh, joining us this morning on Zoom. We pray that your being uh, tuned in this morning will be a blessing to your life and a glory to God. We're going to uh, take our text from Matthew chapter 3. The verses are 16 through 17. Matthew chapter 3, the verses are 16 through 17. And the Bible says, and Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water. And lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. The subject under which we will study on today is entitled The Dove and Me. One of the greatest experiences in life is to become a Christian. A person becomes a Christian by hearing the gospel, believing it, repentance, confession, that Christ is the Son of God, and baptism for the remission of sins. The Lord adds that person to his church, which is the church of Christ. When the Lord adds a person to his church, a person is saved from the eternal wrath of God. That person is justified of all sin before God. That person is redeemed from the bondage of sin. That person is continually cleansed by the blood of Jesus. That person is interceded for by Jesus before his father. That person is provided a hope that will never fade away, a protection by the angels who have never lost a battle to Satan, and that person is named in the book 
of life. That person has all their needs and more provided. All of these blessings are afforded a person when they become a Christian. And the, and the scriptures teach the Christian what they are to do in regards to living with such wonderful blessings. Listen, if you will, to 2 Corinthians chapter 3. The verse is number 18. There the Bible says, and we all with unveiled face, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord who is the spirit. Now, according to Acts 2 and verse 38, every person who is baptized for the remission of sins receives the gift of the Holy Spirit. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 16, the Holy Spirit dwells, the Holy Spirit abides, the Holy Spirit lives inside the Christian. Now, what does the Holy Spirit do inside the Christian? The Holy Spirit performs an extreme makeover. Many of you have heard a scene the episode on television called An Extreme Makeover. Listen again. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18 teaches that when the Holy Spirit is living inside the Christian, the Christian is being transformed, meaning an extreme makeover is taking place. They are transformed into the same image. What image? The Holy Spirit conforms us to the image of Jesus, according to Romans chapter 8 and verse 29. We are transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. So visualize with me that when a person becomes a Christian, the ultimate goal is for that person to become like Jesus. So there is the cleansing in baptism. Then comes the dressing to make that person look, think, and act like Jesus. This is done from the inside out through and by the Holy Spirit. This morning, it is vital that we learn what it is going to take for us to experience being transformed or to experience that extreme makeover by the Holy Spirit. Today, we're going to look at Jesus and his relationship to the Holy Spirit. Now, in Matthew chapter 3, Verse 16, the Bible says, Matthew chapter three, verse 16, the Bible says, and Jesus, when he was baptized, went straight way out of the water. And lo, the heavens were open unto him. And he saw the spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Then when we go to John, John chapter one, and the verse is number 29. Watch what the Bible says. The next day, John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, behold, now watch this now. Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Now, the Lamb, the Lamb, that's Jesus. The dove, that's the Holy Spirit. If you look at verse number 16 
of Matthew chapter 3, the Bible says, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like <clears throat> a dove. So John 1, 29, the Lamb is Jesus. Matthew 3 and verse 16, the dove is the Holy Spirit. Now I have a question. Why did the dove, the Holy Spirit, rest on Jesus? Now, in Matthew chapter 6, 3, verse uh, 16, the Bible says, lighting upon him. Now, when you look at John chapter 1 and verse 32, the Bible says, and John bear record saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it abode upon him. Rest abode. Why did the dove, the Holy Spirit, rest on Jesus? Answer. Here's the answer. He was fully surrendered. He had a lamb-like disposition. If Jesus had any other temperament than that of a lamb. The dove could never have rested on him. The dove is gentle. <clears throat> if Jesus had not been obedient and submissive to his father, the dove would have been frightened away. Jesus was 100% surrendered to his father's will for his life. He rejected partial surrender. Now, the question is, how surrendered am I this morning? How surrendered are you this morning? The dove rested. The dove abode on Jesus. The spirit had come upon him with power. Why? Because he was 100% surrendered. The dove can only rest on us as we are willing to be like the lamb. Let me say that again. The dove can only rest on us as we are willing to be like the lamb. We must move toward 100% surrender to be sure we'll never get there perfectly in this life. But we've got to move more and more in that direction. It's necessary if we want an extreme makeover. over. The percentage of our lives we don't surrender explains our lack of peace, our lack of patience, and our lack of power. What's the 50%? or 25% or 5% non-surrendered stuff in our life? What have you and I not surrendered to God? For some of us, it's plain old resisting God's plan for our lives. He's planned challenging circumstances to come into our lives, to train us to know his peace. He's planned difficult people to come into our lives, to build our patience. He's planned demanding trials to come into our lives, to show us that his power can get us through. God has planned it all for our good, yet we resist it, yet we rebel, yet we are not lamb-like. We're not surrendered. The dove flies away. And we wonder why we have so little peace, so little patience, and so little power. What's the 50%, 25%, or 5% unsurrendered stuff in our life? What have you and I not surrendered to God? For some of us, it's failing to orient our lives around God's purposes. 
We are shaped for serving God, to give him our time, to give him our talent, to give him our treasure, but we won't give God what he desires and deserves. Some of us withhold our treasures when we should be building up the kingdom of God. He did not threaten to get even. He left his case in the hands of God who always judges righteously or fairly. What, what was Jesus passive? Was Jesus powerless? Was Jesus not able to defend himself? No, that wasn't the case. The case was that he functioned within his purpose. How about us? When others do wrong things, do we function within our purpose as Christians, or do we only react to the wrong and the wrong person? If we say, I am only human after I become a Christian, are we recognizing the, the dove? Now that we are Christians, it's the dove in us. Now that you are a Christian, it's the dove and you. You say, I am only, I'm, I, I am only human. Are you recognizing the dove? We want the dove to rest upon us. We don't want the dove to fly away. Am I a quiet man? Am I a shorn man? Isaiah 53 and verse 7. The Bible says, like a sheep that is silent before his sheriffs, so he did not open his mouth. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before his sheriff is silent, so he opened not his mouth. Jesus was shorn of his rights. They brought him uh, before Pilate. But when uh, they were among themselves, when the Jews were among themselves, they couldn't find anyone that would say anything against Jesus. So they had some individuals to make up some stuff that the mouth of two or more witnesses shall a matter be established, but there were no witnesses. He was shown of his rights, his reputation. He's before the people as a common criminal, but he's not a common criminal. He's shown of his freedom, like a lamb is shown from his, its wool. Jesus knew that he had to suffer, though in order for you and I to be saved. Why is he not opening his mouth? He knew he had to suffer in order for you and I to be saved. Why did he open his mouth? Was it that he didn't have anything to say? Oh, you know he had something to say. Remember Pilate says, well, Jesus, don't you know that I have the power to crucify you and power to release you? Jesus said, you have no power all against me unless it's given thee from above. But whoever delivered you uh, delivered me unto you, they have the greatest sin. Now you, you, you got some sin, but the one who delivered me has the greatest sin. Did Jesus know how to talk? Yes, he knew how to talk. Jesus, a pilot says, are you a king then? He says, you say I'm a king. To this end was I born. And for this cause came I into the world to die. Then I might bear witness of the truth. Did he know how to talk? Yes, he knew how to talk. Could Jesus have talked his way out of being crucified? Yes, he could have. Jesus says, I can call legions of angels. Did Jesus have somebody to fight for him? Yes, he did. Well, why did he suffer? Why was he like a sheep before a sheriff and silent? He knew he had to suffer for you and I to be saved. So his being shown was not because he was weak. He was shown because man was weak. 
and is weak. When the Holy Spirit rests on me, when the Holy Spirit rests on you, it causes us to see more than ourselves, causes us to see more than our convenience, causes us to see more than our comfort, causes us to see more than our preferences, more than our perspective. The Holy Spirit causes us to understand that suffering sometimes is for the good of a situation and a people. Am I quiet lamb? Am I sure lamb? Am I obedient lamb? Jesus did what his father wanted him to do. Even when in his humanity, he didn't want to do it. Remember Matthew 26 and verse 39, Jesus says, he says, my father, if it is possible, let this cup of suffering be taken away from me. Yet I want your will, not mine. Let not my will, but thy will be done. Jesus obeyed his father all the way to the cross. He said no to himself and suffered for our sins. And that's why we can be forgiven the obedience of the lamb, of God that takes away the sins of the world. But we are so reluctant to say no to ourselves. We say, not your will, God, but mine be done. And when we say that, the dove flies away. Am I an obedient lamb? What's it going to take for us to have the spirit resting on us? We must be obedient lambs, shorn lambs, and quiet lambs. That's when God can allow his spirit to do the second thing. The second thing, rule in me. I want him to stay on me, but I want him to rule in me. So once we become Christians, the Holy Spirit comes into our lives. Our bodies become the temple of the Holy Spirit. This is the indwelling of the Spirit. But the filling of the Spirit, staying full, of the spirit all the time will cause us to arrive at 100% surrender. We don't want it. We don't want the Holy Spirit just to dwell. We want the Holy Spirit to stay in us. Rule in us. So so fear with the spirit means being ruled by the Spirit. I, want to, I don't want the Spirit some of the time. I want the Spirit all of the time. I don't want the Spirit ruling in me, being present in me some of the time. I want the Spirit ruling in me all of the time. So what's it going to take for the Holy Spirit to rule more consistently in me? Well, God gives us two stop signs. Two stop signs. When God's spirit is ruling in me, I, number one, stop grieving the spirit. Watch what the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse number 30. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse number 30 says, And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you are sealed for the day of redemption. Now, remember, we talked about one of the one, one, one of the wonderful blessings of being a Christian, a child of God, is to have a hope that will never fade away. A hope that will never fade away. Well, now, <clears throat> the Holy Spirit seals us. The Holy Spirit marks us. So when we have the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is marking us. The Holy Spirit is sealing us so that when the Lord comes back, 
Guess how he's going to recognize us? He's going to recognize us by the seal of the mark. We're going to look like him. We are sealed for the day of redemption. We are marked for the day of redemption. He's going to know me, not by the way I fix my hair or the color of my skin or the clothing that I wear. He's going to know me by the Holy Spirit who is living inside of me and who is ruling constantly in my life. Now, grieving the Holy Spirit happens when we commit sins of commission, doing things that the Spirit has commanded us not to do. God speaks to us in and he and, and I know that many of y'all can hear God speaking to you because of the study of his word. Hide the word of God in your heart. Who gives us the word? The Holy Spirit. Holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. So when I hide the word in my heart, who's in my heart? The Holy Spirit. And we can hear the Holy Spirit talking to us because it's in our heart. There are some things you don't have to open the Bible and find a passage of scripture for. You got it in your heart. You carry it with you all the time. So, so when, when the Lord speaks to us and he's pointing us in a direction, he's giving us what we ought to do. He's, he's showing us the way we should go. And we ought to listen to him because he can see more than we can see. He knows more than we know. He's been where we have not been. So why shouldn't we listen to him? But when we do the don'ts, we read the spirit. And the, and the dove, what does the dove do? Fly away. Just like the dove descended on Jesus. Just like the dove descends on us and, and will live in us. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse number 16. Fly away. We don't want the dove to fly away. If we don't want the dove to fly away, then we don't grieve the spirit. Stop sign number one. Stop grieving the spirit. Stop sign number two. Stop quenching the spirit. It's interesting that the Holy Spirit is likened to a dove, but it's also likened to fire. When we fail to obey God, we are putting out the Spirit's fire in our lives. It's like we are using a hose to extinguish the influence and impact of the Spirit in our lives. So 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse number 19 teaches us, don't quench, quench not, do not quench the Spirit. It's not just sins of permission that causes the dove or the spirit to fly away. Our sins of omission also limit the work of the spirit in our lives. Sins of omission. What's, what's sins of omission? Sins of omission is not doing the things that the spirit has commanded or prompted us to do. God speaks to us again. Sometimes he says, do this, do that. And when we don't do so the sins of commission are, are when we do the don'ts. And sins of omission are when we don't do the do's. We quench the spirit. The dove flies away. Why don't we have love, and joy, and peace flowing into and out of our lives? We grieve and quench the spirit. He's not ruling in us. He can't rule if we're grieving him. If we're quenching him, he can't rule. So, so let's pray. Let's pray that we will allow the Holy Spirit 
to stay on us. Help me to be a quiet lamb, Lord. Help me to be a shorn lamb. Help me to be an obedient lamb. Not talking about being a passive lamb. Not talking about being a naive lamb. But being a quiet lamb, I'm going to function within God's purpose. Shorn lamb. I'm going to allow the Holy Spirit to cause me to see more than me. And when I see more than me, sometimes I have to suffer in order for things to get better. Storm land, obedient land. I'm going to set my will aside and I'm going to place God's will in front of my will. And we've got to pray that the Lord will stay on us. We've got to be a quiet lamb, shorn lamb, obedient lamb. And then we've got to pray that he will rule in us. Don't want the spirit to just be pressed. I don't want to set him in a corner somewhere. And then when I need him, I pick him up. I want to be filled with the spirit. I want to be ruled by the spirit. Now, in order for me to be ruled by the spirit, I've got to stop grieving the spirit and I've got to stop quenching the spirit. And if you're here this morning and you need to pray, you're, you're a Christian and you, and you know that you're not 100% surrendered. You know that there's a percentage of your life, percentage of your attitude, your actions, that is not surrender. Jesus had peace. He had patience. He had power. And you want that in your life, too. You want peace, patience, and power in your life. Then you've got to start recognizing the Holy Spirit. But Brother Frazier, why are you talking about the Holy Spirit? Because, because our core value talks about the Holy Spirit. The words that I place on my mind and my body as a result of me realizing that I'm the temple of the Holy Spirit. And I know that it's the Holy Spirit that teaches me that God gives me worth rather than other worth. And that realization compels me. It compels me. It compels me. I got to. I got to be a quiet man. Got to be a strong man. Got to be an obedient man. Got to stop grieving the Holy Spirit. Got to stop quenching the Holy Spirit in order for me to live with my God worth. If you're a Christian this morning, rededicate your life to Jesus by repentance, confession, and prayer. Make up in your mind. And we can pray this morning. Whoever leads in prayer, we can pray. The Lord. Allow your spirit to rest on me, rest on us, and rule in us. We have one more we're going to talk about on this evening. But this morning, if you need prayer, please acknowledge yourself by chat or uh, text message or email or verbally after we sing a verse of a song, if you're not a Christian, the best thing that you can do today is to become a Christian. Life is uncertain. We know that we're here today and we can be gone today, but life with the Lord is everlasting. If this earthly house of this tabernacle be dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal, in the heavens. You want that house. You need Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, 
and the life. No man cometh unto the Father except by me. You need Jesus this morning. Believe that Jesus died for your sins. He was buried and rose again on the third day. Believe the blood he shed at Calvary. Purchased the church of God, the church of Christ. Acts 20, verse 28, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Believe that, Mark 16, 15 and 16. Repent, make up in your mind that God is right about everything. Acts 2 and verse 38. Confess Jesus to be the Christ, Acts 8, 37. We'll baptize you, Acts 2 and verse 38. For the remission of your sins. The Lord will provide you the gift of the Holy Spirit. He'll add you to his church, Acts 2 and verse 47. He'll add you to the church of Christ. You live right. Until you die, you'll receive a crown of life that'll never fade away. Come to Jesus. Acknowledge yourself right now as we sing the verse of a song. There's not a friend like the Lord Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. None. Else to heal all our souls' diseases. No, not one. No, not one. Oh, Jesus. Jesus knows all about our souls. He will guide us till the day is done. There's nothing like the Lord. Jesus, no, not one, no, not one. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen, church. Uh, thank you, Brother Fraser, for that sermon, The Dove and Me. Amen. And hmm. look forward to the continuation of the sermon later this afternoon at four o'clock. We want to acknowledge our prayer requests at this time. Um, we want to um, acknowledge Sister Brenda. Um, she uh, had a visit with Brother Chris this morning and, and they had a great talk. And um, she asked to continue prayers for him, for healing from his um, procedure on yesterday. He's home, I believe now um, recuperating and, um, and pray for the entire family. Um, Sister Christina, um, she asked prayers for herself for traveling grace and seeking a job opportunity, a new job opportunity. So let's keep Christina in prayer as she is for traveling grace as well as success in that particular um, quest for new employment. Also, we want to keep Sister Jan Carr in prayer. She's continued asking for prayers for her husband, Mark, in regards to his health, healing and strength. Also pray for her health and abilities to learn and excel in her new job and to also pass important exams and, and receive certification and that God's hand stays in the midst. So let's continue to pray for Sister Jan as well. Um, Sister, Reynolds, Sister Reynolds wanted to acknowledge um, that she um, um, appreciated the lesson that was taught today as well. So um, we want to acknowledge that too as well. Um, do we have any other prayer requests or um, uh, at this point? Yes, yes, sir, uh, Brother Jeremy. Uh, I've received a message during um, uh, worship service. Um, it, it, and I'm, I'm going to read it. This is Sister Classy with Trinity Gardens Church of Christ. Sister Beverly Guy asked me to reach out to Cash McGardens Church of Christ to inform you and the congregation of her mother's passing. Her mom's name is Sister Effie Guy. Sister Beverly, and so she give me Sister Beverly Guy. So Sister Effie guy has passed away and so I, I got this message uh during uh worship service so after worship service i'm going to call sister beverly and um get details so we definitely want to keep uh sister guy's family in prayer sister effie guy yes yes um um saddened to hear a uh, sister guy's loss um let's continue to pray for the family um, at this time, and when additional information has been confirmed, we'll share that with the congregation. Um, do, uh, do you have any uh, I'll, yes, Brother Jeremy. This is Sister Fulton. I'd like to ask the church to pray for me and my family. Amen. Brother, Brother Jeremy? Yes. Uh, um, also, um, I was speaking to Sister Randall on uh, yesterday, and her neighbor, um, her neighbor, the Florist family, 
that family is suffering with uh, the virus, the COVID-19 virus. Many of the family members have contracted the virus and they, um, and they are neighbors to Sister Randall. And, and she knows them personally and she's requesting prayer for that family that God will provide healing and comfort uh, for them. And that's the Flores family. Uh, yes. Also, we have, um, I have a prayer request that I received by text from Natalie. Um, she has prayers um, for she and her family as well. Amen. Well, do we have any other um, prayer requests at this time? Um, Brother Troy, if you don't mind, sir, if you can lead us in prayer, and if you're a hey, can you hear me? I can hear you. All right. Yeah. You Hello, Brother Jeremy. Yes, yes, ma'am. This is Sister Jordan. This is Jordan. Mm -hmm. uh, would you all uh, please pray for Sister Sharon Lord that has an aneurysm that. You know how sick she is in the hospital? Yes, yes, ma'am. I, I apologize for um, not acknowledging her publicly, but we yeah. definitely want to keep Sister Sharon Lloyd in prayer. Um, she um, had her surgery last week, and um, and she, um, from the aneurysm. So let's keep she and Dominique in prayer um, and, and at this time, definitely, definitely. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's just the laughter. Could you keep my mother in prayer, please? Yes. Sister Payne. Yes, let's keep Sister Payne in Thank prayer. Thank you. Well. Thank you. And also, let's keep Brother Marbley in prayer. Continue to keep him in prayer as well. Mm -hmm. Brother Troy. All right. Dear Heavenly Father, we come again. Thanking you. Thank you for so many blessings. Thank you for your darling son who came. He hung, he bled, and died for our sin. Right now, dear Lord, we come to the throne. Thanking you for just being so good to us and we've been to ourselves. We want to go to the ones that's sick, shut in, in the hospital, then bereaved. All of them, I can't call their names of love, but you know who they are. Touch them in a mighty special way. Touch them where they think right. Touch them where they're here right. Thank you. Touch them where they would love, right? Just be, just be God Almighty. That's who you are. Hey, Heavenly Father, thank you for all the blessing that you stored upon me and Cashman Garden family, dear Lord. Just touch us in a mighty, special way. Touch us where we can still love each other and see each other again. The Heavenly Father, right now, I'm sending a special prayer out to a couple of folks. Brother Chris Carl, Brother Marvin. Oh, Lord. Sister Shirley Green, Sister Mosley, the ones in the hospital. Oh, Lord, touch them. They are family. They are sisters. They are brothers. Touch them, dear Lord. Oh, touch them in a nice, special way. And thank you for being who you are. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Troy, for your prayer. Uh, let's please remember to keep those persons. We had a number of requests for prayers. Let's continue to keep those persons in our thoughts and prayers throughout the week and, yeah. and reach out to them um, and to um, encourage them um, as, as they made those requests. We are now continuing with our worship service at this time with offering and communion um, as the brothers will lead us in, in our next order of worship. We have now come to another part of our worship service, which is called offering. We find in 1 Corinthians 16, 1 and 2, now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. For on the first day of the week, that every one of you lay by him in store, and God had prospered him, that there be no gathering when I come. We also find in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, the verses are 6 and 7. But this I say, he was so sparing shall reap also sparing. He is so bountiful shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Each first day of the week we are commanded to give back a portion of that which God has blessed us with. We realize that sometimes things come along and we're not able to give, or God knows the heart of all men. 
sometimes well, for some of us the pandemic has caused us to fall away and we're thinking maybe that we don't have to give but god has been good to us he has blessed us we are always commanded to give back that which he has so richly blessed us with let us pray our Father in heaven, the Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we come this morning thanking you, dear God, for another day. We thank you, dear God, for the offering that we have received. We ask that you would bless those who gave, bless those who had a desire in their heart to give, but at this time they just was not able to do so. We also ask you to bless those who think it's not necessary, Father, to give, but help them to realize, dear God, that they didn't happen upon it. That you blessed us with every little thing that we have that you open up and give to us, even to those of us who don't even believe in your name, dear God, yet we receive. Help them to understand, Father, that it, it, it that, that you are, are, are a giver and have blessed each of us to, to receive, Father. And we pray that they will have a change of heart and be able to give back to you that which you have blessed us with. We pray, Amen. Father, for those of us that take the offering. We pray that we would do those things according to your will and not our own and realize that it don't belong to us it belongs to you and we pray father that we will take care of business at hand as you would have us do with that which belongs to you thank you dear god in jesus name we pray amen man this part of the service is for the lord's supper we find that the first century christians partook of the lord's supper in the first day of the week for it is the Bible that tells us in Acts 20 and 7 that upon the first day of the week when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow and continue their speech until midnight. This scripture is used to give instructions to help everyone uh, in the body see uh, that we assemble on the first day of the week to fellowship with Christ and fellow Christians and partaking of the Lord's Supper. We're going to follow the Lord's Supper as given to us in Matthew 26 verses 26 through 29. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. Let us bless the bread. Dear most gracious Father, we approach your throne. Thank you for this day. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your many blessings that you've given us this very moment. Thank you for this opportunity to share in such a momentous occasion, Heavenly Father, by which, Heavenly Father, we share in the suffering of our Lord and Savior, Heavenly Father. Thank you for uh, this great occasion. Heavenly Father, we pray that we've all entered into it in the remembrance of what this sacrifice is for. Bless this bread according to your will, your way, and your riches, Heavenly Father from on high. This is our prayer in your dear Son, Christ Jesus' name. Let us all say, Amen. You may be partaking of the bread. And then he took the cup and gave thanks. And gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sin. Shall we bow? Dear most gracious Father, we approach your throne yet again. Thank you, Heavenly Father, because we know that it was the blood that purchased the church. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the great sacrifice. Thank you for the land that was provided. Thank you for our Lord and Savior, Heavenly Father, for the grave could not hold them. They will not hold us, Heavenly Father, in the last days. We pray, Heavenly Father, for all who have entered into this moment, we pray that we've done so according to the scripture, Heavenly Father, with clean hands and uh, humbleness of heart, Heavenly Father, and the remembrance of this great sacrifice being laid before us, for us, Heavenly Father, that we may have the right to the tree of life, but not only that, to the inheritance of the life that is to come, Heavenly Father. We pray this prayer in your dear Son, Christ Jesus' name. Let us all say, Amen. You may be partaking of the cup. But, but I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the of vine from now until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. This has been the Lord's Supper. Thank you for being with us today. Please contact us for a Bible answer to a Bible question, a prayer request, a call from the minister, communion supplies, how to give electronically, and our weekly schedule. Until the next time, may God bless you and keep you is our prayer.